For as long as there's been mathematics, there have been mathematical attempts to make sense of space. And a lot of mathematicians have done some really incredible work in this regard. But in a sense, most mathematical attempts to understand space have been fighting an uphill battle. And the reason is sets. So I briefly mentioned at the end of the previous video that the current foundational framework that most mathematicians use is set theory. What that means is that for a mathematician working in set-based mathematics, everything they're working with is quote unquote built out of sets. Now, if you're trying to reason mathematically about space, there's a slight problem. Sets have absolutely no spatial structure. A set is just an amorphous collection of things. They aren't arranged in any particular way. They don't have any extension or spatial structure. They're just nothingness. So if you want to study space using set-based mathematics, then you have to build up an elaborate encoding of spatial structure using sets. Here's a quick example. Don't worry about the actual definitions here. This is just for demonstration. One of the more elementary notions of space is that of a topological space. A topological space is a set, X, equipped with a particular subset of the power set of X, satisfying some nice axioms. If we're getting really technical, making sense of what equipped with means in set theory requires some purely set theoretic encoding of what pairing is, such as this one. Which, if you try to write down what set that lives in, then you already get something pretty frightening. But even ignoring that kind of detail, which topologists do, we're already stuck with the task of explaining how it is that a set of subsets of some set is space. And this is topology 101, by the way. The kinds of spaces I'm going to be describing in a moment correspond to the notion of a CW complex, which are really fancy versions of this evolving an elaborate process of repeatedly taking disjoint unions of topological spaces and defining equivalence relations on those disjoint unions and taking the set of equivalence classes and so on and so on and so on. What's my point here? It's not that topology is not worthwhile or impossible or anything like that. I love topology. I wrote my master's thesis all about topology. And one can learn to manage all the complex moving parts and do some really stunning work. But my point here is that having all this based in set theory is actually a huge burden. The only way topologists are able to successfully do their work is by sweeping as much of the ugly set theoretic encoding under the rug as possible. Again, the fundamental problem here, the reason we need to resort to these insane encodings, is that sets don't possess their own native spatial structure. So this is where HOT is different than set theory. In HOT, we'll interpret our basic objects types as being inherently spatial. So if we're taking hot as our foundation, we don't need to build up spatial structure using set theory-like encodings. The types themselves are already spatial. Okay, to see that, let's start by describing what kinds of space I'm talking about. So here are some basic spaces. A single point, a line segment, a square, A solid cube, a solid 4D cube, a solid 5D cube, and so on. There's going to be a lot of and so ons whenever I talk about homotopy theory, because the basic patterns I describe for producing one and two and three dimensional spaces can be done in higher and higher dimensions, far beyond my artistic abilities and indeed far beyond anything you can possibly imagine. But these are our basic building blocks, and we can build more exciting spaces by gluing these spaces together. For instance, a line segment has two endpoints. We can glue them together to get a circle. Or I can take a rectangle and glue these opposite edges together Note that I'm orienting them in the same direction to get a tube. Or 
Or if I give them opposite orientations when gluing them together, like this, then what do I get? A Mobius strip. Here's where it starts to be a limitation that I'm doing this with paper. You'll have to imagine that whatever material I'm doing this with is as stretchy as I need it to be. Let's give these two opposite sides the same orientation again, but this time let's also glue together the other opposite sides, also with matching orientations. So I connect these sides together again to get a tube, and then I bring these two ends together to also attach them. Note that, since the orientations match, this will close off and form a kind of hollow donut shape. Mathematicians call this a torus. I encourage you to think of it as a tube tube. Identifying just these edges gives a tube, and identifying these edges gives a tube. So doing both gives us a tube shaped tube, a tube squared. Okay, now what if I were to give these two sides the same orientation, but give these two sides opposite orientations? What's that shape? We know that gluing together two sides of a square with matching orientations gives us a tube, and identifying two sides with opposite orientations gives us a Mobius strip. So what's a Mobius tube? Well, here is where it starts to be a limitation that I'm doing this in a measly three dimensions. Even if my material were stretchy and bendy, it turns out that you can't physically build this. I want to be able to glue together these ends so that the arrows line up in the right way. But I can't do that like before. I'd need to pass the end of the tube through the side of the tube. Not really possible in 3D. But if I had one more dimension, I could do it. This shape is known as the Klein Bottle. There are actually places where you can buy Klein Bottles, but none of them are true Klein Bottles. They're just 3D approximations of the true 4D shape. So we could go on like this for a while. There's a whole zoo of different spaces that homotopy theorists have cooked up. But getting back to the point, Studying how these spaces are structured and what kinds of spaces can be built can get pretty tricky pretty fast. And so it's helpful to have a language for speaking about these spaces and proving things about them, ideally one that's amenable to computer formalization. Teaching a computer how to reason about Klein bottles is a pretty tricky task. This brings me to the homotopy interpretation of Hot. Remember, the idea here is to give a helpful, meaningful answer to the question, what are types, what are terms, and what does it mean to say that a term is of a given type? Under the homotopy interpretation, types are spaces. So if I write down a type in hot, I'm going to be thinking of that type as a space. The terms of that type are going to be the points of that space. So if I'm going to think of the type big T as this space, a square, and write little t colon big T, then I'm thinking of little t as a point somewhere on this square. We'll see at various points that this helps give us intuition for what the language of hot means. So let's give a homotopical interpretation of the unit type. Under this interpretation, unit will be a space that consists of just a single point. There's only one point of this space, corresponding to the fact that the hot type unit has only a single term. Simple. But actually, there's a little more to it. Remember that spaces are stretchy, and so I can stretch this single point to maybe a little space. We'll cover this in a lot more detail later, but as far as homotopy theory is concerned, this is the same as literally just a point. But that's only if there's no holes in this space. The circle is not the same thing as a point, because a circle has a big hole in the middle. A torus isn't the same as a point, because the torus has the one big hole in the middle, 
and then the empty cavity inside the torus. A hollow sphere also isn't a point, because it has a hollow cavity on the inside too. Homotopy theorists are okay with stretching and warping, but puncturing holes fundamentally changes the space. This property of being the same as a single point, no holes, no cavities, no disconnected components, is known as being contractible. The name comes from the fact that we can picture collapsing or contracting such a space down to a single point. We can't do that with a non-contractible space like the circle because we would have to squish the central hole out of existence, which would make it not a circle anymore. The characteristic feature of the unit type is being contractible. As we'll see later on, this notion of contractibility plays an essential role in homotopy type theory. Let me emphasize one thing. It's okay if it's not totally clear how spaces work, why stretching is okay but not puncturing holes, and so on. Like I've said, homotopy theory is a strange world. It can take our three-dimensional brains some getting used to. We'll see more and more spaces and more constructions on spaces as, as we go along. This is certainly not the last time we'll hear of circles, spheres, line segments, tori, contractibility, and all the rest. But for now, let's move on. Mm -hmm.